the first thing you got to understand is doctors, including yourself, and I know you operate this way. It's one of the reasons I respect you and love you so much. Doctors are our coaches. They're not our commanders. Before we dive into the findings outlined in Tony Robbins and Peter Diamato's book, Life Force, I want to remind you that the tools we are going to discuss today are not to be used in place of other protocols recommended by your health care provider. It's important to first communicate with your doctor regarding any of the information you wish to put into practice, especially for serious illnesses. Okay, let's get started. Tony and Peter, it's great to have you both on the show. Good to see you, my friends. So nice to see you, Dr. Gundry. A pleasure, my friend. It's been too long. I know. You know, I think the last time we saw each other was for Tony's birthday party right before we shut down for COVID. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's true. Cause and effect, I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that was what was it. I think Pitbull caused the, the, the crisis. <laughs> But we digress. So why did the two of you, along with Robert Harari, decide to write this book? Well, the, the two of us have been friends. Peter and I have been friends for about a decade plus. We've been in business together and we're always looking for ways to make a difference. But this particular book, Genesis, happened because of an injury. You know, I came to you years ago, but you know about the tumor that I had in my pituitary. So that's been fine. <laughs> but then I was an idiot one day chasing a 22-year-old professional snowboarder down the mountainside on my snowboard. And I couldn't do things he did. And as a result, I had a wipeout where I thought I broke my neck, quite frankly, but it ripped my uh, rotator cuff severely. And I was in nine, nine pain on a zero to 10, you know, nerve pain, couldn't sleep. So, you know, of course, what do you do? You go to your doctors and I went to four doctors. So I get more than one opinion, all of them, surgery, surgery, surgery. And I said, well, what are the, you know, what's the prognosis? They said, well, we have to tell you, you might not be able to lift your arm above your shoulder. And you know what I do for a living, right? That doesn't work too well. And then four to six months, could tear again. And then four to six months of rehab. And I said, you know, I can't be with 15,000 people with one arm tied beside me doing this. So I kept asking about stem cells because I've worked with some of the greatest athletes of all time, you know, and many of them swear by them. And so, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo is probably the greatest soccer player of all time. He was supposed to be out for three months. So two and a half weeks, he was back there because of stem cells. But no, no, no. And then the final doctor looks me in the face, literally, Dr. Gundry, and he did not have your bedside manner. I'll just put it that way. He looks at me and says, life is you. I'm your doctor. You need to listen to me now. Life as you know it is over. And I said, well, you didn't go to my communication seminar, clearly. I kind of tried to tease him. <laughs> but that didn't, that didn't, he didn't break a smile. He said, no, you need to get this. Life as you know it is over. He showed me my spine. He said, you have severe spinal stenosis. It's not just your shoulder. And I've been in pain for about 14 years. So he said, you're, you're going to have to understand. You can't jump. You can't run. You certainly can't snowboard. And, you know, somebody punches you in the gut and you're ready for it. That's one thing. But I wasn't ready for it. You know me. I'm a pretty strong person. But it took me a few hours to get my head together and go, there's got to be a better solution. So I thought, you know, who do I know that knows everybody? Who do I know is a genius? And, of course, that's Peter. He's networked in technology, and he's been focused on this for so long in his life. So I called him to get a referral of who to talk to. Maybe, Peter, you can share from there. Yeah. So I mean, my passion has been exponential technologies and how they're impacting the world's biggest problems uh, for the last 20 years. And it's actually been healthcare and this idea of regenerative medicine that captured my passion for the last seven, eight years. And one of the individuals who I've been working very closely with is a guy named Dr. Bob Hariri, again, one of our, our partners in this, in this book. Uh, and Bob had become enamored with the potential of placental derived stem cells. The placenta is a, the organ, so I think of it as a 3D printer that manufactures the baby, all the stem cells, all the cells required come from there. And uh, we had been working on building a company which today is up and going called cellularity and i said bob you got to talk to tony about you know his potential uh, stem cell treatment and surgery and i introduced tony to bob uh as the go-to guy and um tony why don't you take it back from there well sure the, it's kind of like saying you want to learn about basketball let me introduce you to my friend lebron james right you know, so I sit down with Bob and Bob makes it clear to me, he said, Tony, you know, using your own stem cells, autologists, as you know, it's not going to work for you. He said it might work for a little elbow or a knee, but you've got major work here. You need four day old stem cells. And I said, well, I don't want to do fetal tissue. And he said, of course not. He said, no, you know, when babies are born, usually, unfortunately, they throw away the placenta, they throw away the cord, but those are four day old. That's the force of life. 
And so he told me where to go. I went down and I did three days of treatment. It was just 20 minutes of IV a day and a single injection. The first day I was really just tired. The second day I had a cytokine response. I knew what it was, so I didn't overreact, you know, freezing, shaking for about 20, 25 minutes. But my body really responded well to it. And I went to sleep and I literally woke up. Not only was my shoulder perfect, you know, I got the MRI. This was four years ago. I've never had another problem with it. No surgery, no downtime. But I stood up for the first time in 14 years without pain in my spine. So I became just obsessed. I want to know everything about stem cells. And then I uncovered it really isn't just stem cells. There's this regenerative revolution of precision medicine that's occurring right now that very few people know about. And then Peter was going to this group uh, that was does this conference every two years. Believe it or not, the Pope at the Vatican holds the largest regenerative conference every two years. And so he was going there, he invited me to go. And then they reached out to me and said, listen, why don't you be the cleanup speaker? And I said, okay, if I'm the cleanup speaker, I'm going for every class, I'm gonna attend everything. And I met some of the most brilliant scientists and doctors in the world. I met people that had been sent home to die for various cancers. And here they were seven years later cured because they met somebody like Dr. June and did CAR T cells, for example. Uh, you know, I met uh, the greatest golfer of all time, Jack Nicholas. And Jack was you know, in so much pain, he couldn't stand for more than 10 minutes. It was unbearable pain. So they diagnosed him and told him he did, needed to have you know, a spinal fusion, which I know you know, Dr. Kendry, it's horrible, right? You know, it doesn't, even work half, it doesn't even work half the time and it makes you, it really limits your life. So imagine being an athlete like that. Well, fortunately he did stem cells. He's now 82 playing golf and playing tennis all over again. So I was like, I want it. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do like I did with Money Master the Game. There I wanted to teach people. So instead of my ideas, let me interview 50 of the smartest financial people in the world, the Ray Dalios, the Carl Icons, the Warren Buffetts. So I said, let's do that on a larger scale here. Let's interview 150 of the greatest scientists, Nobel laureates, regenerative doctors on earth, and let's take that and bring it to the masses so that this is available to people right now and show them what's available now and what's coming. And then I turned, and after I convinced Simon Schuster I want to do this project, I went and talked to Peter and Bob and said, why don't you guys come join me on this journey because you guys turned me on to it in the first place. And so it's been a labor of love for us for about three years, and now we're bringing it forth. It's already number one on Amazon. We're really thrilled, but more thrilled to hear the impact that it's having on people. And we're also donating 100% of the money of the profits of this book, just like I did my last three books. So we're feeding 20 million more people. You know, I've had 850 million people over the last seven years since I started this with Feeding America with a commitment to a billion meals. We're ahead of schedule. And then the balance is going for a research with some of the top people in Alzheimer's, cancer, and heart disease. So we're real excited about this being something that people can read and use as a guidebook for anything. If they got a major disease or if they really want to just take their life to a different level of energy or strength and at the same time make a difference in the world for people that need it most. That's amazing. Okay, how did the three of you work together to, to write a book? It, it's hard enough for me to work with myself to write a book. Uh, you know, I have, uh, you know, I'm constantly arguing with myself. Uh, Dr. Gundry, it, you know, uh, every year I take uh, a group of my, my abundance members on a platinum trip, a longevity platinum trip. And so for the last uh, two years, I've been organizing sort of going and finding the top 50 scientists, the top 50 startups. Uh, we go between San Diego and, and, and San Francisco on the West Coast. We go to New York, Boston, uh, and, and, uh, and New Hampshire on the East Coast and go back and forth. And so uh, I had really a collection of incredible people uh, that Tony and I were able to, uh, to interview to kick this off. And as with everything, Tony's a master in uh, in organizing information and really drilling down into the motivations of these individuals and what the vision is. And so we did a lot of interviewing. Um, uh, we did a lot of writing. Uh, we had a lot of support uh, from a number of incredible writers. But it was really it was a deep investigation. Uh, and one of the most important parts of this book, because it's not a textbook, it's written with incredible uh, story elements and hero elements is the heroes of this. So uh, we've identified, you know, there's a, at least <clears throat> a dozen to two dozen uh, heroes in the book and we tell their stories. And it just, you know, the intention of this book is to give people hope, uh, to give people an understanding of how fast things are changing because we really are in a period of exponential growth and this decade ahead is going to be miraculous in terms of health and and if you've got disease if you've got a challenge today or your loved ones do this is a book to show you what's possible now uh, and what's 
likely to happen in the next few years uh, that can re-energize you to really double down and uh, and and pursue health, right? You know, we all know health is wealth. The man or woman who has their health has a thousand dreams. The man or woman who does not has but one. And so this is to help you fulfill that dream. Well said. Uh, now, you guys say that one of the most important principles in the book that you, you say over and over again is functioning as the CEO of your health. Hmm. And, you know, I use the expression, this is the only house that I'm going to ever live in. And if, if I spent as much time and attention on my house as I do on my other possessions, including my, you know, my home building and my car and uh, my lawn, uh, we'd have a whole different uh, ball game. So it, go into why sh you should be the CEO of your own health. I think you, you know, we have History United together, and I think you know one of those pieces. I'll just back up. A lot of people have fears about things. One of them would obviously be cancer. I was obsessed with that at a very early age for some reason. I, I was successful. I worked 20 hour days. I was able, I was gifted enough to meet some of the greatest athletes and politicians and turn them around before I was 20 years old. And so there was a stage right around that time where my brain went crazy and started to say, well, maybe I got all the success, not because I worked my tail off or I had good grace in my life but because I was gonna die young and it wasn't gonna be by you know a car accident and you're easy, it was gonna be slow through cancer. And of course, as you know, as you obsess on something enough, it tends to show up in your life. And it didn't show up first in my own life. First, it showed up with my girlfriend's mom. She came home crying hysterically. My mom, my mom, and finally I figure out between the tears, her mom was sent home to die with nine weeks to live. And so if it had been me, I don't know if I would have kicked in at the same level. You know, My own fear would have taken over, but most of us will, do things for those we love that we won't even do for ourselves. And so I've always been Mr. Solution, right? There's a problem, there's an answer. That's one of the things Peter and I have such in common. And the bottom line is I said, listen, wait a second. There are thousands of people with stage four cancer who were not supposed to live and are here today. We just need to figure out the pattern of what they're doing. And I'm gonna go read everything, find it. And so I did, and in a few weeks, I read all these books and I found one book in particular. I wouldn't recommend it today because there's much better tools but it was called One Answer to Cancer. And it was this dentist who had pancreatic cancer, which as you know, is one of the most deadly. And he's alive 13 years later and he showed what he did. He was told he had six weeks to live. And you know, he did this detoxification of his body, took pancreatic enzymes. And so it was a detailed plan. So I went to this woman who's in her early 40s, her name was Jenny. And I said, Jenny, I said, you know, I know you don't wanna die. Just sitting here and doing nothing is gonna, you know, that's gonna be self-fulfilling please read this, see if it inspires you and see if you're willing to go for it. And then I gave her as a man think of the kind of work on her head. She dove in and loved it and went full force. And within a few weeks, her energy returned. She wasn't feeling sick. She felt different. Within about eight or 10 weeks, she had a tumor on the back of her shoulder was protruding and she had one in her feminine organs and you couldn't see or even feel the tumor. And now she'd outlived the time they said she should have lived. So the doctor convinced her to do exploratory surgery and when they went, the only thing they could find of the tumor was something, the end of my pinky fingernail, literally. Wow. And the doctor said, this is a miracle. And she said, it is a miracle, but let me tell you what I did. And he's like, no, 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 this is spontaneous. Medicine. This is a miracle. So she went around and spoke at churches and she's in her eighties today, totally healthy. So God bless. that turned me from victimhood of like, oh my God, cancer can get me to go for it. And so for the next 13, 14 years, you know, I became a biohacker, as you know, I had to I'm on stage, you know, 12, 14 hours a day with, you know, 10, 15 or 20,000 people for three, four, five days in a row. They don't usually sit for a three hour movie and I got to hold their attention. So the demands of my body were incredible. But then, as you know, when I turned, I think it was 32, I'm a helicopter pilot. I went to go get my physical, which you're required every two years to do to stay current. And um, I came back and my, my assistant kept saying, the doctor keeps calling, wants to talk to you. And I said, please just have him send the report because I was really busy. I was getting ready to go to the south of France. And then the night before I'm leave, supposed to leave, I get a note on my door, taped on my door that says, the doctor says it's an emergency. You have to call. So it's like all of a sudden you know, that survival brain kicks in. I found myself going, oh my God, you know, I've been treating my body so well, but I do fly. Is it radiation? Do I have cancer? But fortunately, I've trained my body at that stage to go, okay, you know, a coward dies a thousand deaths, a courageous person wants. Let's wait and see what it really is in the morning. I called and he said, you've got a brain tumor. And I said, what? I mean, I, I came to you, there's nothing wrong with me. He goes, no, no, clearly you have a pituitary tumor at the base of your brain. We need to operate immediately. And I was like, slow, slow, slow down. How can you know this? And he said, well, 
I noticed when I was working with you, you seemed to have a lot of growth hormone. And I said, well, hands bigger than your face and a size 16 shoe. How'd you figure that out, right? <laughs> he, says, he says, it's not funny. He said, I'm trying to tell you, this is a real thing. And I did this blood test and, in, and you got this problem. You need to do an MRI when you do this immediately. I said, well, let's say I did. Let's say all this is true. What's the prognosis? He said, well, I have to tell you, you could die, but it's unlikely from the surgery. But your endocrine system will probably never be the same, and you shouldn't count on having the same level of energy you're used to. And I, I said, well, that, that's unacceptable. That's my life. And I said, uh, you know, I'd like to get a second opinion. Who would you recommend? And this guy did not have your bedside manner. He got really angry. He said, figure it out for yourself. So I said, screw it. I don't think there's anything wrong with me. I went off to the south of France. I did my seminar. But, of course, the mind starts to get going. So I came in and I did the MRI, looked at the guy's face and knew before I got out, obviously there's a tumor there, which there was. It had infarct, as you know, because you're one of the people I came to later to do my additional measurements. It infarct and swallowed some of it up, but still was pushing. So I thought, well, instead of a surgeon, let me go to an endocrinologist. So I went to the top endocrinologist at the time in the country in Boston, completely different guy, very much like you, Dr. Gundy, which is a really good hearted man, really just just great. I mean, I felt like a different presence. And he said, Tony, there's no question this has got to be dealt with, but you should not do surgery. That would be insane. He said, there is a place in Switzerland you can go to twice a year, just fly over, get a single injection, and you're done. And I have gigantism. And he goes, oh, that'll keep those arteries from getting too big and you're having a heart attack. And so I said, well, doc, I said, my arteries are normal size. You just said that. He said, that's true. But you know, you want to be certain you're not going to die. This is how you be certain. I said, well, what if I'm already certain? or I could stay certain by measuring every year. And I said, you know, the other doctor wants to, you know, cut me. He goes, well, the baker wants to bake, the surgeon wants to cut, and, I, and I'm an endocrinologist, so I want to drug you. And he was just the sweetest guy. He goes, I guess you could do that, but I'd feel better if you did the injection. I said, well, the injection could have side effects. He goes, I don't think so. And Dr. Gundry, you know, six months later, the, you know, it never got in the U.S. because the FDA didn't approve it because they found it caused cancer. So I missed the bullet. Guy was a totally sincere and beautiful man. But I went to six more doctors till finally one doctor said, Tony, you have the recovery ability. You do two marathons in a weekend, literally run around the building. And two days later, you recovered. He goes, I think it's the growth hormone. And he said, frankly, I know, you know, guys that are bodybuilders that spend $1,200 a month to get what you get for free. So I was 32 <laughs> then, I'm 62 now. And in 30 years, I've had no problems with it whatsoever. And I tell the story because people have this sense of this is how it has to be. And if you're going to be the CEO of your own health, the first thing you got to understand is doctors, including yourself, and I know you operate this way. It's one of the reasons I respect you and love you so much. Doctors are our coaches. They're not our commanders. And, you know, the Mayo Clinic did a great study where they showed 286 patients and they found that the second opinion was the same as the first, only 12% of the time. 88% of the time was not the same. And so they recommend everybody get a second opinion by doing it, by getting two or three opinions, you refine the diagnosis and you're better at treating it. That's the Mayo Clinic. And if, if they don't understand there's doctors, you, you're one of them, the hardest working people. You work seven days a week. You go to three different cities. I know you, you're, just, you're driven like I am to make a difference like Peter is. And so, you know, I try to explain to people, a doc's, you know, the, the half-life of a medical education today, according to Harvard's 2017 study is 16 to 24 months. So, you know, within 16, 24 months, half of what they know is gone. So who educates them? The pharmaceutical salesman, which is why we had, for example, the opioid crisis. Imagine you're a doctor as yourself wanting to help people and they tell you this is perfectly fine and now you get people addicted and they die. So I think it's important for people to say, these are the hardest working people. I love them. I respect them. Often they give up their own health for us. But I also need to make sure I get more than one opinion. I make my own decisions because when it comes to your health, raising your children, your religious beliefs, and perhaps your finances, it's pretty important that you make those decisions yourself. Other people give you coaching because if you're wrong, your life's going to change. And better for you to be wrong by making your own decision because then you could change it. And to make those decisions today, you need the data. That's right. And one of the things we talk about in the book is the revolution in diagnostics. You know, it used to be that you just went for the regular checkup, you know, listen to your heart, you're looking, you know, listen to your lungs, do a little blood work, and that was fine. But the reality is most of us have no real idea what's going on inside our body. Uh, so we talk about uh, one of the companies that, that Tony and I have starred really for ourselves and our own family and our friends, and it's grown, it's incredible, it's called Fountain Life. And I just went for my annual upload just two days ago in Naples. 
And the the future of medicine doesn't look like the past. It is involves spending five hours and digitizing yourself. So in five hours, full body MRI, a brain, brain vasculature MRI, a coronary CT using something called a clearly AI, DEXA scan, genomics, uh, a grail cancer uh, blood biopsy, uh, and your gut biome, and ultimately 150 gigabytes of data uh, that in five hours tells you what's going on. So for me, I've done this for five or six years. Uh, every year I hold my breath until I go and do that because eventually I'm gonna find something going on. You know, for the data that we've gotten out of this shows that 2% of people in their 50s and up who go through this have a cancer they don't know about, right? Two and a half percent of an aneurysm they don't know about. 14.4% have something that is uh, life, uh, life impacting significantly that they need to take care of. And the challenge is that most people say, I don't want to know. I just don't want to know, which is bullshit. Of course you want to know so that you can take action on it. Uh, the other thing that this gives you is your baseline. So uh, something that Tony and I share as well is a large enlarged aortic route route. So where the aorta comes into the heart, uh, the first time I did this five years ago, six years ago, uh, it was like, huh, that's large. My dad had, uh, you know, uh, issues. Am I concerned about this? But over the last six years, it hasn't changed at all. So that's my baseline and that's fine. But people don't know, right? And this is the potential of being the CEO of your own health, having the data that allows you to make wise decisions and find things at the very beginning. We're all developing cancers all the time. This is just a normal case. It's normally your immune system zaps it. On an occasion, it doesn't. And you want to find out at stage zero or stage one. And Dr. Gundry, what, well, some of these tests are so important, as I'm sure you know, the National Cancer Society did a study with 100,000 people. And what they came out of it was, is if you get something at stage three or four, you have an 80% chance of dying. I prefer the 20% chance of living. But their point is, it's much harder to turn around, as we all know. If you get at stage one or two, you got an 80 to 99.9% .9 chance of surviving. And now we have these tests like this grail test. You know, all the heroes in this book, they had something in common that made them push beyond what the standard of care was. And usually it was loss of a wife or a husband or a daughter or a son or someone close to them. And then they spent the last 20 years and now we get the benefit. So in Grail's case, there's this gentleman named Jeff Huber who lost his wife. They would have caught it. If they would have caught it early, she'd be alive today. And he knows that. So he marshaled all his creativity and put together this test. And now we can test by a simple blood test for 50 different cancers. Part of the problem is we have, as you know, colonoscopies, mammograms for women, but most of the ones that get us, we have no tests for. And between that and MRI, which goes past the brain barrier, blood brain barrier, you can know where you are. So we had a client who came in, his wife pushed him like crazy. And he's like, I've already had my physical. He went through traditional physical. It has blood as your analysis. We give him the grail test and guess what? He had bladder cancer, but it was early stage. So it was a 20 minute outpatient procedure and he's got no cancer versus catching it down line when it might be extremely difficult or even impossible to turn around. Another one is the test that Peter just mentioned, the CCTA, the clearly test. You know CT, obviously, and you look at how great it is, and there's sometimes a lot of misinterpretation. It's really hard. You're trying to figure out where's the plaque buildup, but you know, as well as I do, that hardened calcium is totally fine. Your body's healed, right? Correct. It's that liquid that you got to the stuff that can soft calcium that can break off and make you the widow maker, you know, give you the heart attack or, or the stroke. And so this new uh, technology is driven by AI. It just came out about six months ago, and it literally opens up your arteries digitally, seeks through using the AI, and finds what is actually hardened calcium versus soft, gives you a score. They can predict the heart attack up to five years in advance. And on top of it, they show you what they do to clear it out, which is, you know, your approach would be one of the best approaches of all. So. I, my, our, one of our partners, Dr. Bill Cap, he, he built 12 hospitals and owns them. And he just got tired of sick care, very much like you. And so he finally decided he wanted to be in precision medicine, regenerative medicine. And so he became our partner. So he called me up and he, he's super understated, right? And he says, you know, Tony, I really think we may have first access to one of the greatest breakthroughs in cardiology in the last 10 years. And so when he says it, you listen, what is it? So he explained it to me. So my, I said, I'm coming in. So my father-in-law was with me, he just turned 80. 
he's one of those guys that's self-made. He, he, you know, built his own business. He was in the lumber business. But, you know, as he got in his late 70s, near 80, everybody around him saying, well, you know, the inevitable's coming. You got to prepare your affairs. And I watched his energy just drop. So I said to him, Dad, I'm going to go do this. I explained it. I said, we're both old enough to probably have some soft plaques in there, but it'd be great to know where they are specifically and what to do to clear them out. So why don't we go together? So he agreed. Dr. Gunner, we go there. My father-in-law, my 80-year-old father-in-law, he had no soft c- components. He was clean as a whistle. All of a sudden, he's like, got a whole new lease on life. I was better than I was five years ago, but I wasn't as good as he was. He was perfect. And so his whole mindset changed. So while we're there, we have this other technique that we do with a lot of athletes. I've had it where, you know, a lot of injuries just don't repair well. And it's because the connective tissue blocks out the flow of oxygen and blood to the fullest extent and length, and also nerves get trapped. So this process called relief where they use ultrasound, they find what's going on, they use amnio fluid, and they just open up the space and then the nerve snaps back into place. I had a problem with my ankle from being on stage from 16 years ago. No one could touch it. You, you touched it, it was like nerve pain throughout. Yeah, it's perfect now. So I turned to my dad and he, what makes you old? What makes you feel old is pain, not being able to walk and he can't walk right because one of his hips so messed up. Well, his heart's great now. So I said, hey, why don't you let the guys look at you here? They found two places in him. They treated him in less than 30 minutes. He's walking smooth as silk. So we get on the plane. I'll never forget this moment. He crosses his arms and he goes, you know, Tony, those people talk about living 110, 120. I don't know about that. But he said, you know, my heart's perfect. I'm walking perfect. I can live another 20 years. I can live to 100. You've only been married to my daughter for 22 years. His entire life has changed. So it's not just doing this out of fear. It's doing it so you can actually take control of your life on a whole new level. And there's so many tools to do it with. That's a great point. You know, I tell all my patients, you know, it is never too late. And I I tell stories in the books about, you know, 85 year olds who heart disease, diabetes, and, you know, this is the end. And so, you know, you're right. I mean, it it is really never too late. And part of the beauty of this book is you know, here's, you know, here's how to find out what's wrong. And, and yeah. let me, so you, you don't have to be Tony Robbins or Peter Diamatis to do this. I think one of the messages of the book is this, this is now available or soon will be to yeah. normal people. And, <laughs> normal. <laughs> yeah, neither well, of you are normal. Part of, what, Sorry part, of what about makes that. That, part of what makes that work, Dr. Gundry, is some of these tools that sound outlandish, like there's a chapter we have on incisionless brain surgery. You go, well, why would I want that? Well, if you have a mother, a brother, a sister, a father, a grandfather has Parkinson's, I mean, it's debilitating. And I went to see one of the, these treatments. They're now in 100 hospitals, and it's covered by insurance. And it's ultrasound, super high-powered ultrasound. They don't cut your brain open. They just figure out what part of the brain is creating the trembling. They treat it in 15 seconds. Now, I watched a woman who was, I guess, uh, been on 15 medications. She could, They literally had to help her. She couldn't walk across the room, shaking, couldn't hold a glass. She comes out of the thing, literally stands up, walks perfectly across, and someone hands her a glass of water. And as they hand it, it's like it registered. She reached out, no shaking, drank the water. And then she burst out. You ever seen anybody get those audio implants and they can hear for the first time? It is so emotional. But guess what? Insurance covers it. (laughs) It's an outpatient treatment. It sounds like something from the future, but it's here right now in 100 different universities. You know, one of the things, uh, uh, Stephen, that we talk about in the book, I think is so important, is you know there's this magical period ahead you know we're really uh entering a period of exponential change and uh the question is what do you do to stay uh, you know healthy enough and young enough to intercept these these capabilities coming our way and it really still comes down to a lot of what you talk about it is diet exercise sleep mindset you know, for, for us also getting our, our full body upload so we don't die from something stupid that we could have found and be preventable. But, you know, in the in the chapters on, on diet, exercise, and sleep, it really is a lot that you teach um, and other scientists around the world confirm. And I think that's very important. People need to know they have control through things that don't cost you a lot of money. You do need eight hours of sleep. You know, you should be eliminating sugar and eating a whole plant diet to the maximum extent possible. You do need, you know, to exercise uh, some amount every day, you know, and if you can, two or three times a week with with weights. These are still the fundamentals, 
But then you can also be excited about the extraordinary tech coming our way. So we talk about, you know, the idea of age reversal uh, in the book. We talk about the idea of a whole new generation of, uh, of replacement organs that are not science fiction. They're happening right now. And so it's meant to be a, a massive dose of optimism that if you have something, you can read about that chapter or just realize, uh, you know, that you probably need to be saving not to uh, take you through years, you know, 80 years, but maybe 100, 120 years or maybe even more. Yeah. And, there's, and there are great tools in there, Dr. Gundry, that are so simple to help people with that. So, uh, you know, Peter talked about sleep. I think you remember my whole thing was I'll sleep when I die. <laughs> you know, I'll sleep four or five hours. My wife loves eight hours sleep. But, you know, I was working on the sleep chapters research at like 625 in the morning. I'd be up at 930. Something's wrong with this, right? But when we met Dr. Walker, and Peter's the one who turned me on to him, he's just a genius in the sleep area. He's a neuroscientist from UC Berkeley. And he said, Tony, I think I can convince you. He said, there's been a 1.6 billion person study. And I said, that's impossible. You could never coordinate that. He said, we didn't have to. It's called daylight savings time in 70 countries. And he said, here's what we found. These are the facts. When we spring forward and you lose just one hour of sleep for the next three days across all 70 countries, on average, heart attacks increase 24%. Traffic accidents do as well. But what's crazy is when we get the fall back and we get that extra one hour for the next three days, guess what happens? Heart attacks drop 21% and you see the same thing with accidents. So, you know, we give you practical solutions that are really simple so that you can make it happen. We all have a rhythm. Our body needs the rhythm. And so he's convinced me. Now I, I wear a whoop, you know, I measure my sleep, and I feel such a radical difference by making some small changes, having an eye mask, keeping the temperature at 65 degrees so you drop down cooler. You know, the very simple things that you can do besides having the re regular ritual of when to wake up, uh, go to sleep and wake up. But also, like, if you're looking for weight loss, a lot of people get so overwhelmed. Now, you're one of the best at that, so your audience probably already knows this, but Simple changes, like a study done was done by The Lancet, where they had people just cut down 300 calories a day. That was it. And that was a bagel or one Starbucks a day, right? That's all it was. Yeah. So easy to do. And they lost 16 pounds on average over 18 months. They lower their blood pressure. They balance their blood sugar. I mean, these are simple things to do. And if you need help, there's some new tools in the book as well. Like there's a new FDA approved element called Plenty. And it's made of just cucumbers but it expands a hundred times. So you drink it before you eat, it fills your stomach, but unlike the old things that used to do that, that disturbed your gut, it does not. And, it, and the average weight loss, according to the FDA, is 22 pounds. So for those needing to get that initial, without, and doing it naturally and doing it healthily, there are tools to make that happen. Amazing stuff, amazing stuff. So uh, you have a, a, quite a bit of talk about our, our mutual friend, David Sinclair from, yes. from Harvard. And yes. you know, his, um, uh, rejuvenation recipe. Would you would you uh -huh. would you share rejuvenation recipes with uh, with the audience? So the the question you have to ask yourself is: if you got your same genome at birth and at age twenty and age 40, 60, 80, right? The same three point two billion from your mom and the three point two billion from your dad. Why do you look different? Why don't you, you know, have your, you know, six pack from your 18th birthday? And it turns out, you know, your genes are not your destiny. It's not your genes. It's which genes are turned on and which genes are turned off that impact aging. And what David talks about, we have an entire chapter, a hero chapter on him. He wrote an amazing book called Lifespan. Life Force is a, is a great compendium to it. And we talk about the notion that there are these seven sirtuin genes. Um, that have two functions in your body that are competing constantly. One of those functions is controlling your epigenome. Epi meaning above, right? So your genome is not your destiny, <clears throat> but which genes are turned on and which genes are turned off determine whether a cell is a skin cell or a heart cell or a lung cell. And also which genes are turned on and which genes are turned off determine whether or not your body is young or old. So the sirtuins control the epigenome. They also have another function, which is they control and support DNA repair. And as we're getting older, we're constantly developing mutations. The average cell is seeing between a thousand to a million mutations or, or uh, mutative events per day. 
and we have these great DNA repair mechanisms. The challenge becomes that your sirtuins, as you're getting older, are spending more time focusing on repair than controlling the epigenome. And then they're fueled by something that, you know, I would love Tony to talk about it more of NAD that falls off as you age. And so your sirtuins are having less energy to do their work. They're getting distracted by DNA repair and they're losing control of your epigenome. And that's one of the fundamental things that David talks about being the cause of aging. Uh, Tony, yeah. Yeah, it, it's a, Bob Harari gives us a great metaphor on this. He said, you know, imagine you got a great mansion. He talks about it with stem cells as well. You got a young staff and anything breaks down. The place always looks perfect because they fix it immediately. But as they age and eventually get a whole senile and you've lost the resources, the whole thing starts to fall apart. And that's basically aging. So those these master genes, the sirtuins, they also, besides turning on and off your genes and cleaning up your DNA, they're also responsible for reducing inflammation, which we all know is critical. That's where disease really starts. And they convert in your mitochondria the energy from food. They empower the mitochondria to do it, but they need the fuel called NAD. And the problem is NAD drops off the cliff in late 40s, and by the 50s, you've lost at least 50%. So at the time you've accumulated the most challenges in your DNA, just from the long life you've had, exposure, radiation, and chemicals, and when you need the most energy to heal, all of it is dropping. And so there is a precursor to NAD that most people may have heard of called NMN, never mother, never. And it's required for that NAD to be the fuel in the first place. And so the beautiful thing about it is it can be supplemented. The challenge is, you know, David Sinclair, uh, together with us, we did a lab did studies, I think it was six different products. There was no NMN in these six products. One was like $30 a month and one was $120 a month. So I asked the lab guy, I said, tell me, I said, are these just people just cheating? He said, well, it's coming from China, that's possible, but it's more likely it just breaks down in 30 to 45 days. So by the time they get it, it's inert. There's nothing there, there's nothing of value, but there's something really exciting. First of all, you know, traditional NMN, if you give it to an old mouse, an old mouse, as I'm sure you know from your research, is a mouse of 20, 24 months, it'd be like a 70 year old person, right? Right. You give an old mouse, you know, a chance to get on a on a uh, running platform, they can do about a quarter of a kilometer before they exhaust. A young mouse can do a four times that, a full kilometer. You take a mouse and put him on NMN for 14 days, and he now runs two, the old mouse will run two to three kilometers, two to 300 times more than what the young mouse did. But then the question is, do, you know, mice studies really transfer to humans? Sometimes, sometimes not. So here's one of the most exciting things. You know, Peter and I both have a friend named Ed Shulock, who created a company called Metro Biotech. He's actually got a larger company called Eden Rock, where they brought in 100 of some of the greatest researchers in the world. And they're all incentivized to produce results. They're not just hanging out. And they have come up with a synthetic form of NMN called MIB626. And why is this interesting? Well, because first of all, the uptake of normal NMN is about 30%. The uptake of this is in the range of two to 300%. It's even more powerful is, unbeknownst to anybody else, this has been top secret, but it was just released, the Daily Mail covered it about a week and a half ago, and it was in Boston about four weeks ago. The special forces have been testing this for two years outside of Boston. And they've done the safety profile, which passed easily, but the performance profile. And the commander got so excited, he talked to somebody and it got in the press. So what's in the press is not all of what's going on. It's just a small amount. But he, what he revealed, I can't tell you because Peter and I both invest in the company, but what he revealed was that the top athletes in the world, right? These are men and women are in the best shape. There's not like a lot of more room for them to improve. The explosion that happened in their endurance was just like the mice. The explosion in the muscle development from the same amount of stimulus was unbelievable. And most importantly, the cognitive function improved for them. And then that's what the military cares about because you're behind enemy lines and you're exhausted. Keeping this together is what's going to keep you alive and get the mission done. So they're now doing, they've got two different studies at two different hospitals on COVID because, as you know, COVID goes in and robs from the energy in the mitochondria, both preventing COVID and long-term COVID. They're in phase three trials right now. They've got trials going on in kidneys that affect COVID. And, of course, they're now just starting their first dementia product because the brain, as you know, needs more energy than anything else in the body. So this is not going to be a, a supplement. This is not going to be a nutraceutical. This is going through the FDA right now. They believe because they've already passed safety and they're already showing efficacy, they believe they'll have this approved in 24 months. So imagine you go to your doctor 
and have an ingredient that your body normally has anyway at a younger age that will allow you to turn on and off, you know, your epigenome working more effectively, reduce your inflammation, maximize your energy mitochondria and clean up your DNA. I mean, this is, these are the kinds of things that excite the heck out of us. So the book shows you what you can do right now, right? NMN, but it also shows you what's coming in the next 12 to 36 months in all these areas. So, you know, and you're ready to take advantage of what's coming. And then maybe mention Peter about uh, metformin. Yeah, so metformin is something that I take a gram a day of. Uh, I first heard about it from Ray Kurzweil. Ray's brilliant beyond belief. He wrote our forward for this book. And of course, uh, it's a drug that's over 50 years old. It's off patent. It's uh, you know pennies per dose. Uh, and it was uh, you know, in, also has the name of glucophage. And metformin causes uh, cells in the body to reduce uh, glucose uptake and glucose in the bloodstream. And glucose, of course, is what fuels cancer. So there's a number of mechanisms that Im uh, metformin impact, but one of the key treatments, uh, one of the key beliefs is that it reduces the prevalence of, of cancer development in the body. So um, I take, again, a gram of that uh, each day. Um, it's extraordinarily safe, right? It's one of the safest drugs out there, one of the cheapest drugs out there. And, you know, speak to your physician about whether it's right for you. It's typically given to people who are either are diabetic or pre-diabetic. Um, but it's thought to have a, a number of other mechanisms impacting the mitochondria and the production of ATP and NAD as well. Yeah, I, uh, uh, David and I talk about that uh, from time to time. I know he takes it and I know you take it. I, I personally don't. Uh, the reason I don't is I take Acromancia capsules, but that's a whole nother subject. And it turns out there's a lot of evidence that metformin actually works by increasing the prevalence of Acromancia in your gut. But that's another story altogether. I mean, the, the, the thing is that we're beginning to finally understand all of these supplements and all of the ancient knowledge from ancient Egypt and Greece and, you know, this plant or this food. And it's like, well, we can now show the molecular mechanism, right? These molecular factors, it's extraordinary. Yeah, these, these guys knew what they were doing. They, they didn't know protect, perhaps you know, how it worked. Well, they didn't know how it worked, but they knew it worked. You know, in, in, my, in, my, in my new book, Unlocking the Keto Code, it turns out that the spice trade in the Middle Ages, uh, spices were incredibly expensive and 50% of the explorers actually died uh, trying to bring spices back to uh, Europe from, you know, the East. And people don't do that unless it's a drug, quite frankly. And it turns out all of these spices, I mean, even frankincense and myrrh from the Bible, have incredible potent powers for improving our mitochondrial function that I talk about in the new book. So you're right, well, these people have known, you know, people have known about this for millennium and we're just now finding out the mechanism of action. You know, uh, Stephen, it might be worth talking about one of our favorite subjects in the book and it, it talks to the miraculous nature of what's coming down, uh, which is the ability to manufacture organs. Yeah. So, you know, today, uh, people uh, who have different conditions can need a heart transplant, a lung, liver, kidney transplant, right? There are hundreds of thousands of people waiting on a transplant list. And your chance of getting a transplant is, you know, you know it's very poor. Uh, so imagine having tech that enables us to produce brand new organs. Imagine having a backup set of organs available to you. And, and this concept, which has truly, you know, been science fiction, is now becoming science fact. In the book, we talk about two heroes, uh, Martine Rothblatt and Dean Kamen. I've known Martine for 40 years. Long story short, uh, her daughter comes down with a fatal disease, pulmonary fibrosis, um, and Martine leaves her job uh, exits her, her equity packages and focuses with a high school textbook in the medical library to try and find a cure because her daughter's got a couple years to live. And lo and behold, she discovers a drug that's uh, an orphan drug that's not being developed in a pharmaceutical company. She's able to wrench it out of their hands, get it into production, go through FDA trial, and this drug is able to stay her daughter's pulmonary fibrosis. But she knows that's not enough. You need to actually get backup lungs, replacement lungs. So Martine goes after a multitude of different approaches. 
Um, the one that has panned out incredibly uh, miraculously over the last couple of months and last year is uh, she realized that the size of a pig's organs are the same as a human organ. So the same size, heart, liver, lung, kidney, and so forth. And you can't transplant a, a pig, you know, kidney or heart into a human for two reasons. One, we have this immediate immune uh, attack of that organ. It's a foreign organ. But the second is pigs have these, what are called endogenous retroviruses, retroviruses in their genome that uh, would escape and infect the human. What she ended up doing in her company, United uh, Therapeutics, along with Craig Venter, was they humanized the pig. They modified 10 genes. They got rid of those, uh, those retroviruses. And they've been able to demonstrate incredibly uh, transplanting first a kidney into someone who was on life support. And that was about uh, four or five months ago. Uh, and you know the family volunteered that individual's body for this test. And then most recently, uh, a modified humanized pig heart into a recipient uh, who is alive now because of it. And what's amazing is you tell people this, and it sounds like science fiction, but Dr. Anthony Atala at Wake Forest University has been creating 3D printed organs for more than 12 years, bladders and ears for the Department of Defense. So he uses your own stem cells, sprays them on a scaffolding, grows them through time. So this is not new, but it's exploding through. And when we asked Martine, you know, this was about a year ago, when we were doing that part of the interview with her, said, you know, when do you see this happening, for example, with the pigs? And she said, well, right around the time your book comes out, it was two weeks ago, <laughs> the book came out this week that that first transplant happened. So uh, you might mention Army as well, Peter, because it's yeah, pretty sure. the other One of the other heroes in this book is a gentleman by the name of Dean Kamen, uh, one of the most prolific uh, engineers, inventors on the planet, 1,500 patents, the creator of FIRST Robotics, the creator of uh, thousands of incredible devices. You know him as the inventor of the Segway, which is the least significant thing that he's ever manufactured. <laughs> Um, but uh, he got a contract from the Defense Department about three, four years ago to build something called the Advanced Regenerative Manufacturing Institute, ARMI, brought a collaboration of universities and medical schools and companies from around the world. And they set out on the audacious vision of could you build a machine that in one end you put your skin cells or uh, induced pluripotent stem cells resulting from your skin cells. And those pluripotent stem cells are proliferated and then differentiated. And out the other end of this process comes an organ, a transplantable organ. And so they've already demonstrated bone, ligament, bone uh, segments that can be put into your knee or your ankle. And their next objective that they're working on with uh, Doris Taylor, uh, who's the world leader in, in pediatric hearts is uh, going after pediatric hearts. Um, and the idea is from like a, a pluripotent stem cell to a beating pediatric transplantable heart in under three months. Uh, and it's just, it's just mind blowing. So by the way, when you ask them when's that gonna happen, what do they tell us, Peter? Is it 2023? Yeah, so, so I mean, years. it's just my, we're really at the edge of the curve of technology where we all know it doubles in power every 18 months and halves in costs, but we're hitting that base of geometric change that people need to know about. I'll tell you another one that's really interesting. There's a company uh, that Peter and I met the founder of when we were in the Vatican. Brilliant guy, brilliant organization. They're in phase three trials, so your audience knows safety is one, obviously efficacy is two, efficacy scales three, and then if you've made it through that, you'll get your approval from the FDA. So they're opening up approval by the end of this year, the beginning spring of next year. Single injection, Dr. Gundy, one injection, it triggers your WINT pathway, the WNT pathway, the signaling pathway that tells your brain, makes stem cells this many for your brain, this many for your heart. They know how to up or low or down regulate it. If it was cancer, slow it down, down regulate it. If you needed tissue in your knee, up regulate it. Single injection, and 11 months later, you have regrown all your tendons in your body and there's no osteoarthritis. And the most amazing part, it's coming from the clean epigenome. So it's like 16 year old tendons, even if you're 40, 50, 60 or 70 years old. I mean, we're, we're living in the most amazing time. Here's one more. You know, I, there are about 22 veterans killing themselves every day. It's one of the great tragedies of our country. And you know, I've worked with these veterans and turned them around. I had a gentleman that came to date with destiny with dark glasses on. He did uh, both Afghanistan and Iran. He lost, I think, uh, Iraq, I should say. I think he lost 42 of his buddies, saw him die. 
you know, night sweats, you know, shivering. When he handed him the microphone, he was shaking like this. And I worked on him for about two hours, got the glasses off, just reconditioning the nervous system. I actually took him on CNN six months later. And when he came on, the producer started crying, but she saw the video of him before. Complete change. But I could do that all day long, 24 hours a day, and not help all the people that need it. So I was looking for a scalable solution. And now the Army has one. They just tested it for three years. It's 85% effective. It's a shot that goes in when you have PTSD or super high levels of anxiety, and it resets the autonomic nervous system so that they're not in that fight or flight mechanism, right, sympathetic all the time. And I sponsored 100 vets. And, you know, I don't know them. I just wanted to help. And so the first vet I ever did this with, for example, writes me this letter. It's typical of the letters I get. And he says, Mr. Robbins, I can't thank you enough. You completely changed my life by funding this. These doctors are amazing. I, you know, I was, you know, in this situation in Afghanistan. He goes through all the details and he goes, when I came home. He said, I just couldn't handle it. I couldn't look at my wife. I couldn't touch my children. Everything was either black and white or rage for me. He goes, there were only two gears. And he said, and I attempted to kill myself twice. And so when they told me the scholarship was available, I thought I'd give it one last shot. And he said, I got to tell you, 20 minutes after the shot, he goes, I still have the same memories, but none of the negative emotion. He said, it's like, let, there's color again. He said, I went home and hugged my kids and kissed my wife. He said, it is a completely different universe for me. And this works 85% of the time, one shot or sometimes two shots where they're a week apart. So I, I want people to know that there are, are new solutions that sound like science fiction or miracles, and they are miraculous in their impact, but they're here right here and right now. You know, go ahead. I could go on if you want a few more great examples, uh, Dr. Gundry. Yeah, please. I mean, just, you know, first of all, uh, we, we experienced one of the most extraordinary, miraculous healthcare miracles, which was going from a sequence of the COVID-19 Wuhan uh, uh, RNA virus to having uh, vaccines manu you know, designed in 24 hours and put into global production in under a year, right? This is something that normally takes seven to 10 years, and we did it in under a year. Um, now we're seeing vaccines being used across the board. So Moderna is working on an HIV vaccine. Uh, they're working on vaccines to hit you know, the endogenous viruses in us, like uh, cytomegalovirus or herpes, or things that are exhausting our immune system to the point where we can't fight cancer. But if you could activate that, one of the companies uh, that, uh, that Tony and I are in, involved in called Vaccinity is able to create vaccines to target your own endogenous uh, uh, protein. So they've got a product in stage three now to vaccinate against Alzheimer's, in stage two to vaccinate against Parkinson's, um, to go and vaccinate against cardiovascular disease by hitting the PCSK9 enzyme in the liver uh, to stop the production of LDL, your, your bad cholesterol, and the targets going after against bone loss or muscle loss. And so you know, this is incredible. Add to that CRISPR and gene therapy, which is, you know, the 2020 Nobel Prize for Jennifer Doudna and her and her, and her partner. It's miraculous. So I just want people to realize the incredible amount of hope and the tools coming our way. And so if you're being impacted by your health or someone, a loved one is, Please read this book to give you a, a roadmap and on ramp uh, a vision and to give you hope about taking back control of your life. And by the way, you know, on the vaccines, uh, you know, a lot of people are concerned uh, about the mRNA vaccine as kind of a form of gene therapy and they don't want to take it. And I understand those concerns also and share those concerns to some extent, especially for our youth. I know you've written about this in terms of myocarditis and the impact on kids. This uh, share them what, what ours are based on. They're based yeah. out of peptides, so yeah. there's no there's no virus in it. There's no you know uh, you know no traditional DNA, no RNA. Yeah, None it's, of it's, it's a uh, vaccinity's uh, got a COVID nineteen uh, vaccine that's going through final approvals. Uh, we just got the data back that uh, the the as a booster shot we cause uh, antibody titers three times higher than uh, the mRNA vaccines. Uh, and it's got very low reactogenicity. It's, uh, it's the vaccine that I'd want to give my kids, right? It's, it's much safer. It's a, it's a peptide vaccine versus a mRNA vaccine. 
All right, you've given us lots to think about. You guys are, you know, a couple of the busiest human beings that I know. Uh, give, give our viewers and listeners kind of three things that they can do now while they're waiting for this all to become standard of care. Um, what do you I got? Think, I, think the, I think the very first thing they've got to do is take control of their mind. I don't know if most people know it, but the, the CDC, you know, is now most people know that their di biggest fear people have is dying of COVID and outside being elderly. If your immune system is compromised, the real number one threat is, you know, and the whole world knows now, but nobody seems to be talking or acting on it is obesity. 80 percent, 79.8 percent of the people that died of COVID are obese and it brings all those comorbidities. And you're the doc to show them what to do to turn that around. We give them tools, too, but these are the best things. Second, though why I mentioned the mind is I couldn't believe this. I put it in the book because it's from the CDC. The number two factor of you dying of COVID is fear and anxiety, according to the CDC. Now, you and I would know that common sense, but neuroimmunology, your mind can shut down your immune system. Your mind make your heart race. Your mind can cut down your oxygenization. I mean, these are things that most of us are not working on. So the last two chapters of the book are the simplest tools that allow you to take control of your mind and see the power of it. That's why placebos work the way they do. I mean, it's extraordinary. But I think the second thing that I would mention for somebody of that nature is to do the fundamentals. You know, the book is divided into setting you up with understanding what's the revolution is, helping you understand peptides, help understand what makes you age and how you can start to change that process some of the latest tools. The second is all these tools and the hero stories of the best things, gene editing, the example I told you, the single injection that regrows you know, your cartilage. The third section is all the things to do between sleep, exercise, and we give you like all these breakthroughs, like the plenty breakthrough on, on, on diet, when exercise breakthroughs. There's a device you can do a 10 minute exercise. It's not an infomercial, but it's been proven to build your bone density as well as your muscles. And you only do it once a week and it's scientifically proven. So look at the things that you can do that are right there from diet, exercise, sleep, sauna, things of those nature. And then the third is, please go get yourself and find out where you are. If you wanna go from where you are to where you wanna be, you can decide what you want for your body, the energy, the strength, whatever, you're getting younger, but you gotta know where you are. And that's why it's so valuable to get some of these simple diagnostic tests that can really change your life by understanding what's going on. I got nothing to add there. It's, it's the basic <laughs> sleep, diet, exercise, uh, you're not dying from something stupid by having those diagnostic tests. I think if you're in your 30s, 40s, and 50s, it's it's optimizing your hormones. You know, the body yes. was never intended to live past age 30, and so we start to you know decompensate. We we are you know uh, our testosterone, estrogen levels, all of those things start to go down, and you want to do your best to fight against the dying of the light and bring yourself back to an optimum. Uh, situation. So that's another area you can focus on. Uh, but it's still the basics. Uh, there's a concept called longevity escape velocity uh, that that uh, Ray Kurzweil and George, uh, George Church talk about, which is there's going to be a point in the near future that for every year you're alive, science is going to extend your life for more than a year. Uh, uh, Ray's prediction is that's 12 years from now. George's was 15 years from now. We write about that in the book. And so your goal is to live vitally for those next 10 to 20 years to really be able to intercept the technologies coming our way. Yeah, I think that's a, the really good point is we, you know, we want to live long enough for to take advantage of all that you're talking about. And yeah, those sure. right now are all within our power. And, right. um, you know, I think everything you're talking about is exciting, but we got to, you know, we got to stay alive in good shape to take that's advantage right. of that. And that's yeah, that's, you're right. That's all within our power. And I, you know, I really appreciate you bringing that to the attention of everybody. So lifeforce.com, uh, you can, you know, a lot of information more in the book. This is, you know, one of the challenges we had is that this field is, is accelerating. It's moving faster and faster. So at lifeforce.com, we're going to be just keeping all of these conversations up to date, uh, showing you the stuff that we do. Uh, and so you can find out more information there. Yeah, I, I, I'll finish on that. Uh, I used to be a consultant to the Institute for Healthcare Improvement, which uh, the, the founder actually found that the traditional practicing physician 
in the United States is 20 years behind current research knowledge in, in all fields that we studied. And I, I participated in uh, cardiac surgery and cardiology, and, and he was absolutely right. And so, sadly, the information you get from well-meaning, hard-working physicians and physician extenders unfortunately is really n has not caught up uh, with what is available and I really appreciate both of you all three of you for bringing this uh, to people's attention and you got Tony you're right you got to be the CEO of your own body and yeah. you know that's what I tell my patients uh, you know d don't give up looking for an answer uh, when somebody tells you no that's not possible or you don't have this or there's no hope um, right dr. Gundry thank you for your time thank you for your yeah, work we always enjoy being with you take good care and continue your beautiful work all right both of you thank you so much really appreciate it be well thank you I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dr. Gundry podcast. Make sure to check out the next one here. Let's dig into my top three longevity diet tweaks. Number one, to live longer, stress yourself out.